Hello and welcome to ALW Exploration. Today I'm at a memorial and it is a memorial for the Halifax bomber crew of JD-151 who on the 11th of August 1943 the Halifax crashed here. They were from 78 Squadron Royal Air Force. This is the story of the ill-fated Handley Page Halifax of the Royal Air Force number 78 squadron tail number JD151 Halifax Mark II code EYM based at RAF Brayton in the East Riding of Yorkshire The Handley Page Halifax is a British Royal Air Force four-engine heavy bomber of the Second World War it was developed by Handley Page to the same specification as the contemporary twin-engined Avro Manchester. On the 25th of October 1939, the Halifax performed its maiden flight, and it entered service with the RAF on the 13th of November 1940. It quickly became a major component of Bomber Command, performing routine strategic bombing missions against the Axis powers, many of them at night. The Halifax was also flown in large numbers by other Allied and Commonwealth nations such as the Royal Canadian Air Force, Royal Australian Air Force, Free French Air Force and Polish forces. Air Chief Marshal Sir Arthur Harris Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Air Force Bomber Command, described the Halifax as inferior to the rival Lancaster, in part due to its smaller payload. Though this opinion was not shared by many of the crews that flew it, particularly for the Mark III variant. Nevertheless, the production of the Halifax continued until April 1945, during their service with Bomber Command, Halifaxes flew a total of 82,773 operations and dropped 224,207 tonnes of bombs, while 1,833 aircraft were lost. So the story of GAD-151. On the night of the 10th of August 1943, the crew of this 78 Squadron aircraft were undertaking an operational flight to bomb Nuremberg. The English conventional name for the German city is Nuremberg. This raid was later generally regarded as a failure. On their return to Yorkshire, JD-151 was running out of fuel as they neared the base at Brayton. Two of the engines then failed as he made the final approach to land. At 0619 hours the aircraft crashed near Wrestle, just off the runway. Sadly, three of the seven crew died as a result of this accident. In later years, a small memorial was erected at the woodland near the crash site. Bill Chorley's 1943 volume of Bomber Command Losses relates, quote, that the aircraft ran low on petrol while on approach for a priority landing and crashed O619 short of the runway and between the villages of Wrestle and Brayton, some six miles east northeast of Selby, Yorkshire. Two crew were killed and all others injured, one dying subsequently of his injuries. Chorley notes that Flight Lieutenant O'Neill was the squadron's signals leader. In the year 2000, a farmer near Wrestle found some aircraft wreckage, which was identified by a local aviation enthusiast as being from a Halifax. This was mistakenly later identified as being from JD-151. On the 20th of August 2000, a memorial was dedicated to the memory of those killed in the accident. Subsequently, however... More thorough research has revealed this to be the crash site of another Halifax, DT-524, and not JD-151. 
So the story continues with the final hours of DT-524. On the 7th of September 1943, those on board this 1658 heavy conversion unit aircraft took off from RAF Rickall at 10.05 hours to undertake a fighter affiliation training flight. On board was a regular crew of seven trainees working up to become an operational bomber crew. With them were three heavy conversion unit instructors. This training exercise involved a hurricane to play the part of an enemy fighter aircraft making simulated attacking passes towards the Halifax, with the crew of the Halifax keeping lookout for it, and the instructor pilot of the Halifax would then demonstrate taking evasive action. The hurricane pilot made several attacks and later stated that the evasive action taken was very effective during all but the final one. When the final attacking pass was made, the Halifax initially went into a 90 degree bank and the starboard outer engine emitted a considerable amount of smoke. The aircraft then rolled over onto its back and lost height. Witnesses on the ground stated that DT-524 lost its starboard outer propeller at this stage and having been out of control for a time, was then partially recovered from being inverted. After almost levelling out again, it went into a spin. The starboard outer engine then broke away from the wing, and it dived into the ground. The aircraft crashed at midday at the edge of the plantation shown in my aerial and ground footage of this video. This is the site all 10 airmen flying in the Halifax DT-524 was sadly killed. A detailed examination of the wreckage followed. By chance the detached starboard outer engine landed in the main wreckage trail and was quickly proven to have been broken away from the aircraft before it hit the ground. Various other portions of the aircraft were discovered to have become detached from the aircraft as it fell and were found some distance from the main wreckage concentration. Unfortunately, air training accidents like this were common. In fact, DT-524 operated from the heavy conversion unit at RAF Rickall, where the crews of smaller aircraft were trained to operate as crews in four-engined heavy bombers. The unit prepared thousands of aircrew for service on Halifax squadrons. They paid a high price with a loss of 72 aircraft in flight training in similar fates to that of DT-524. I'm Andy from ALW Exploration. Thank you so much for watching. Blessed we forget. Bye bye. Shoulder. I'm looking back at your door